we're introduced here. 3v3 events a stronghold blue team. The critical slayer is a Lord Commissar. Very good offense. Fights in melee combat can support too and begins with a refractor field. This is the Deathcore of Pre DLC, so there's going to be that distortion on the vocals. Have fun with that. Alongside, Corrupted Waffle is a brother captain durable commander that walks through objects and cannot be suppressed, can disrupt, can support, and can smack you in the face too. And riding off, this blue team is Unelmat as a plague champion starts off range combat. Damage over time, Bolter can get melee weapons, some decent utility and support can build turrets and repair, but it's very slow. Red team, a couple of Eldar players first up is Eerie as a Warp Spider X up to the point commander that fights range combat by default. Lots of it capping and harassing potential with some awesome control abilities. Lord Commissar not happy and alongside Leston as a Farseer support commander that fights in melee combat. Lots of great buffs with some debuffs and control abilities too. She's in retreat using the same hand elite scheme which is looking pretty cool. And rather off the teams is Nod as a force commander, very good offense fights in melee combat, can also tank, disrupt, and support with buffs, a very versatile hero. Gonna have a tangle with some heretics here, there's the Doom Blast. Some of you may be getting some deja vu right about now. I actually casted and rendered and uploaded this video yesterday, but it broke and the audio went out of sync with the video for some reason, no idea what was going on. Couldn't fix it, so I'm trying to re-record it and hopefully, it doesn't happen again. Some stormtroopers and corrupted ruffle will come in to flank the space marines. The force commander's gonna go down, but looks like the tactical marines get away without a loss. Yes, they do. And Mastar Avengers in retreat without barely any damage. So now corrupted ruffle can push this natural power in the mid. A very easy power to hit. Not much in your way, so as soon as you force off an army, go straight for that central power if you can. The powers on the flanks are much more the responsibility of the player on that flank, I think. And a plague champion could do some work there if he gets the bow spear. Could just patrol this side of the map, keeping the VP safe and bashing power. Pretty cool slayer with just double guards and so far has got a motor last turret here and is controlling those two contested points. Eerie with a Guardian Weapon team and Howling Banshees. This is 2.4.1. Of course, Howling Banshees getting a huge amount of changes. And if you haven't already, you should go ahead and read the notes for the updates because there's a hell of a lot of them and I'm not going to remember them at all. I'm going to make mistakes. We have some operatives on the field for Corrupted Waffle. Some contention around these guys because of their satchel charge one shot in generators which is set to be adjusted they're a pretty cool unit though even without that can infiltrate big burst damage from the shotgun it's just they just reel off a whole bunch of shots and then reload but that big burst of shots initially can be so painful 15 piercing dps per model which is pretty damn good with those bursts here are some rangers for less than has double rangers and in 2.4 these guys now do courage damage so they can suppress i think you need two rangers to suppress a target i don't think one with how often it shoots is enough to suppress brother captain getting into trouble because snipers since they were rebalanced a few patches ago do big damage to heroes he might get hit by two shots here and go down yes he does go down miles away from his army corrupted ruffle not paying attention to the brother captain there Double operatives though for Waffle. Suppressed are the operatives by the Rangers, I imagine. Now they are now they suppress the other operatives and now he's gonna aim for the CSM, I would imagine. Try to get a model off them. Turns and shoots. Smack suppresses them, but they actually hit different models, so. No model loss. Some grenade launchers up for Unalmat's Heretics and an aspiring champion on the other squad. Gives some nice versatility very early on to give your heretic squads different upgrades like that. Shuriken sure, Cannon's been caught by the Lord Commissar who's taking shots but he's tanking it fine so far and here comes some support. Double Catachins from Critical Slayer with the double guard and also and Banshee's trying to run into double operatives with Stormtrooper and Strat Squad support. I'm surprised they even got out of there. Banshee's now leap into combat passively but they no longer have a melee charge so they're actually much worse at chasing which is a massive change for them since they were 
like the best unit in the game at chasing and now they can't chase much at all so they did get a cost decrease though and the leap is great for changing direction quickly and reacting to threats quickly and stuff and they still have fleet of course double tactical marines into assault marines for nod might see a big engagement on the east side if corrupted waffle shows up here he comes over from the west but a bunch of unelement stuff is off the field now these operatives getting mighty close to a massive army and look at them get absolutely torn to shreds that's the big downside of operatives they need to get relatively close 30 range on their shotguns and they're not the toughest thing around uh oh special attack could spell doom for those assault marines that's a pretty decent trade i think for blue lost operatives but took down some assault marines not too bad heretics getting a nice doom blast but staying in the game for just a few seconds too long there rangers are going to see a lot of a lot of usage now i think not that they didn't see a lot of usage in a way but that suppression or that courage damage rather from them is awesome i wonder if you can have one ranger and just piling on range damage from other sources and you can suppress stuff you might be able to because it's 75 courage damage per shot and all units or most units have 100 but of course they regenerate it very quickly so i'm not sure if the small amount of courage damage from most other range weapons would be enough to make up the rest of it to suppress there's a grenade spike easily dodged by a critical slayer banshees going after the commissar yes they are he has the power sword i think yes and he's gone for character armor lead by example means that he doesn't have the energy to power his shield for as long as he might like katachan's moving in but they're gonna get decimated by piercing damage yes they are loses one of his katachans just kept them out in in play for too long brother captain coming over to help out but he's pretty low on hit points now he's backing off to the shuriken is eerie and knows this power here was going on mid double tactical marines not quite behind cover needs to put them behind cover properly i suppose it doesn't matter with assault marines now drawing attention there's a hell fury though on those tactical marines and i think he has a damage modifier against cover which is doing a hell of a lot of damage to those tactical marines as you can see that was painful force commander in amongst the csm which is generally what you want to do with your force commander maybe get a couple of battle cry attacks on the heretics and then you got to tie up those csm don't want those bolters doing dps steel stuff Walks by Rexark levels up to two. No war gear on this guy yet. I think Entangling Web is tier one now. So Ogrins, or rather the Lord Commissar, could be annoyed greatly by that. Ogrins are, of course, tier two, so he could have got it for tier two anyway. Purifies on the way for Corrupted Waffle. How are they going to do with double kinetic pulses maybe going off and disrupt them? Also, the Force Commander with his. Battle cry could get the Thunder Hammer up. 494, 258. The Plague Champion, in fact, does have the Bowel Spear. I've not seen him go for this power at all, though. Falcon already on the field for less than a support vehicle for Eldar. Allows you to reinforce and transport Allied infantry. And unlike other transport vehicles or support vehicles, it does a decent amount of anti vehicle damage with one of its weapons there. And get an awesome shield in tier 3 as well. Here come the Purifiers. Power melee squad with a heavy melee demon hammer. Have the longest charge range in the game. Pretty damn tough as well. At 20, 50 hit points at level 1. Also have the Psychic Field. They get Purification as well I think. To give energy back to stuff. There was the Psychic Field. Was it? No. It was cancelled by the knockback. There's the Psychic Field put it in a completely empty area I guess that's where he targeted it initially and it just went off again when he got back up 457 258 expect D cannons in the mid I would think at least one from each player surely to try and hold this VP and it might force the blue team to go out to the flanks they have a medical bunker and a Nurgle shrine that could be tough for the red team maybe it's time for these guys to go out to the flanks they do have the mobility of elder and they can put webways maybe on each flank one to go after the power 
This generator is almost down. I want to go after the natural VP. Looks like scouts are in fact decapping blue team's natural over there. Banshee's chasing down the com Lord Commissar, I should say, as he's called. Now grenade spike. Pretty nasty. Doesn't quite wipe the catechins. Here comes some operatives to help out there. Sergeant, as you can see there, does not get a shotgun. He gets a hot shot las gun, which I think can fire on the move. It has actually less DPS than these shotguns. I think it's 14 DPS, but does have a completely different firing pattern, of course. It's more gradual instead of the burst, I think. Do the operatives have their full back land? Doesn't look like they do. 437, 258, double Plague Marines on the field for Anelmat. He's embracing Nurgle, alright. These guys have a health regeneration buff and a small little damage buff to their bolters, so it's now even better to get that blind defensive double Plague Marine purchase going. Uh oh, here he's going for a Wraith Lord. Has he seen those double Plague Marines? Uh oh, done down a Force Commander though. Purifiers are in trouble. They don't want to run into this guy and he's wrecking them right now. Red team just backing off slightly and now taking shots. Ouch. 396, 258. No sign of any Wraith Guard. They of course got a number of changes in 2.4. Chimera on the field for Critical Slayer. So much reinforcement support, they can reinforce off the bunker, off the shrine, and now off the chimera. Falcon getting repairs. And a bright lance for the Wraith Lord, yes. Can try to go after that chimera with it. Not a whole lot else to go after it. I suppose Nod could get missile launchers and melter bomb and stuff. And the Farsi can get her Singing Spear, as well as the Power Blades, of course, for the Whoops the up. They do have some ways to quickly get some AV up. Look at the Bright Lance doing work on the rear armor there of the Chimera. Anti-armor, Stormtroopers throwing their Melter Bomb with double Plague Marines. That could be a dead Wraith Lord very quickly. Plague Marines getting shots in. It's rooted to the ground because of the Melter Bomb and the Plague Marines there. I think stacking up and down goes a Wraith Lord. Did not last long. A Chaos Dreadnought is the field. Big engagement mid. Look at this stack of units. Brother Captain surely should get the Nemesis Force Sword. He'd be buffing so much stuff with it. Commissar Lord could also get the Aura of Discipline. Oh, he's gone for stubbornness. So he'll in fact be buffed by all of that stuff. Gets massive buffs when you get thought 30 models around you. The Lord Commissar, I should say. Need to get used to that. 390, triple two, a two to one cap for the blue team. That's the Basilisk Flare from the Lord Commissar. One of his globals and a very good one it is. First one to teleports out. Can anyone cap the mid? Look at these scouts. Don't have any upgrades, but they're on capping duty here. Might even be able to go ahead to the wreck point because blue team are not re reacting at all. Here comes the plague champion maybe. He's got the bile spewer and he's just sitting in the middle with it. I don't understand. The east side has been wide open for a bash for most of the game and he's not doing anything about it. Very strange. Chimera being a bit more aggressive now. Looks like he has some guardsmen inside. You see the side mounted turrets firing. That's because there's units inside to operate them. A unique characteristic of the Chimera might get a massive engagement here. 351, 219. Big engagement. Looks like the Space Marine player forced off the mid and now it's going to be a 2v2 with the double Eldar fighting the Chaos and the Grey Knights. Grey Knight Terminators on the way for Corrupted Waffle and a whirlwind for Nod. That's a pretty decent choice I think. Here he goes tier 3 to no doubt get a D cannon on the field after losing that Wraith Lord. Corrupted Waffle just dropped one of his Stormtrooper squads. Hell Fury goes down. 3-4-1, 2-1-2. That's a singularity. New marker for it. Don't think he's going to get a model. Oh, CSM drop a model on retreat from a ranger shot, I believe. Another Chaos Dreadnought from Anel Mat. Grey Knight Terminators take ages to get on the field now. Same as Paladins, they have a really long production time. I think it's like 75 seconds or something. 
But a lot of changes for those guys, of course. Have a chat about that when they get on the field. Chaos Dreadnought with its buffed auto cannon. Doing increased air of effect. Looting half the mid. But these scouts continue to sneak around over here. But look at this. Infiltrated catagens which the scouts can't spot. Might wipe them out if they catch them on retreat in melee. Dire Avengers persuaded to leave. That's an Eldritch Storm. To take out the bunker, I think. And he got a few models with it. One of the Plague Marines and a bunch of heretics. But that was mainly to deal with the bunker, I believe. Rip arm hits on the Chimera. It's going to be done for, I think. Yeah, there's a Melter Bomb from the... The Silk Marines as a dead Chimera. 334, 180. Could he have saved that with some frantic repairs there? Maybe. Energy field is up on the Falcon, decreasing its speed, though I think it did get a speed increase in 2.4. Still relatively quick, as you can see, it makes it super tough and annoying to deal with. Here are the Grey Knight Terminators getting their wrist mounted side cannon up and retreating. Oh, that's a singularity. They didn't want to get into that. They have increased speed now, the Granite Terminators. I think it's up to 4.5 from 4. It might be up to 5 from 4.5. Either one of those. They no longer, though, drain energy passively, which was an awesome passive for them. They do have decreased health as well. But, of course, they can now withdraw off the field. Basically, it's a retreat with, I think, a 3-minute cooldown. 295. 180. A one to one cap. We'll see how the red team deal with the Grey Knight Terminator. They could get Dark Reapers up. They could get some Seer Council with support. Could do a lot of damage to them. We'll see. Eerie is floating a lot. I think he's waiting for an avatar here. Leston has a D cannon of his own. Does he have more than one? Yes. So three D cannons up at this point could be very difficult. For blue team to get a cap here they might want to push red team's natural is wide open on the west side critical slayer is going after it is he might just be flanking into the mid it is very easy to flank into the mid on this map we have these ramps here to get in behind any defensive structures falcon taking a lot of damage double plague marines and the terminators with their psycho and i think they should stop chasing it and just shoot it with the psycho and what they've switched targets this is a dead whirlwind, I think. Double Plague Marines there. And the Grey Knight Terminators are going to take it down. That was the Holocaust on the Dire Avengers level 3. But they do get away. Down goes the whirlwind. Needed to get it moving way quicker than that. Single cap for Red Team. Critical Slayer not going after the VP. He was trying to flank in. But now some Banshees have spotted his massive Death Corps of Three Guardsmen. Fully upgraded with both their squad leaders, but no weapon upgrade yet. 279-180. Renat Terminators do drop a model, but now they're out of there. Look at them go. Purifiers have hit level 2. I thought they'd really struggle to get to do anything worthwhile. Lord Commissar's going after the VP now. There is a guarding weapon team there, though. Maybe he can get a decap with his shield up. Maybe. Is it worth it? 272-178. I think it's worth getting a decap. Just don't overstay your welcome over there. It's the Eldar Fast here. Level 4 with Gravity Blade. That's going to help against the Purifiers and the Terminators. Spirit Stones and Room Armor. It's actually a pretty decent little soft counter for Terminator variants since they will be lifted up and thrown aside. And maybe, since the Grey Knight Terminators can retreat, they might try and retreat out and you can run in with some melee stuff. So yeah, a really good choice from less than 272-159. It's some interceptors on the way for Corrupted Waffle. Massive changes for those guys. They're now in tier 3 for a start and have access to side cannons from the off. They can actually freely switch between melee weapons and side cannons along with that teleport. Pretty damn useful unit. Double fire dragons for less than... There's an Eldritch! Demon Rust spots it quickly and gets away. I don't think these heretics are going to be so lucky though. And they are in fact wiped out. Operatives for Corrupted Waffle set around some Kasukin on the way for Critical Slayer. No artillery whatsoever on the blue team right now. They could get a Plasma Dreadnought maybe for Waffle. A Blastmaster 
may be on another map to get critical slay on no sign of a manticore yet here are the interceptors they are getting their grenades up so they're going to have a crack grenade a psychic grenade and armed by the full as you can see with these d cannons but as i said they can switch to melee weapons at will but they do the damage of a tier 2 squad of course in melee they still have the same weapons that they did chaos terminators on the field for Anel Matt, there's that side cannon fire going in. Avatar of Kane is on the field for Eerie and he's getting yet another D cannon. There's the gravity blade. There is double fire dragons. We're actually backing away here. Should be doing damage to those terminators. Here's the Avatar. Gonna really help Red Team soak up some damage in the mid. It's all kicking off on the east side as well. Assault terminators hit in the field. The Chaos Terminator is going for some Lightning Claw. It's going to give them a very powerful melee weapon and some extra health. Being chased by the Assault Terminators who are, are also getting some Lightning Claws up. And with the Force Commander support, his Battle Cry is buffing them. And he has 40 Emperor to buff them, of course. Which I think got a cost decrease. I think that's down to 50 red now. Can really buff up those Assault Terminators. 211-156. D cannons getting shots on the mid doing a big chunk of damage to that Lumen Rust but D cannons were changed a hell of a lot of course they now do basically half of their damage up front down goes to Lumen Rust and the rest of it is delivered as a damage of a time with the air of effect so the upshot is if you keep your stuff moving you shouldn't be gibbed by D cannons nearly as much as you was before when it delivered all of that damage in a burst instantly as well so just keep the stuff moving he's gonna lose his lightning claw terminators here teleports out way too late and he's not moving them now they're gonna be taken down a catechin sergeant got the last shot with his melter gun wow big misplay from nod i'm not sure if the teleport was on cooldown so he couldn't use it earlier and if it was he shouldn't have gone in ran into huge amount of trouble is that a singularity that's gonna be a really nasty one 197 156 Welling Doom doesn't hit a whole lot. It wasn't a singularity or it didn't go off. That is a singularity and that is a singularity as well. It's going to be really nasty. Wow, that was painful and another one. Look at the bits of Guardsmen. I don't think they lost the uh, squad though. The squad leaders really add to their durability. There's the Wrath of Kate. Knocking double Plague Marines around Avatar. Doing a great job soaking up damage here. 179, 156. The flanks are quiet. All the action is on the mid. I'm gonna try not to get dragged into the massive engagement here because he can lose us so quickly. Orbital, a pretty decent one from Corrupted Waffle. Did he? I think he actually killed one of the fire dragons. Yeah. 166, 156. As I was saying, Eldar, so pretty surprised that they're not utilizing that mobility a little bit more with some webways on either side. Maybe they're saving all their red for Eldritch's. 160, 156. Avatar, I think, will get away that Wailing Doom. Not the Plague Marines far enough off so they can't use their snaring missile launcher on him. And he is going to get away there. Well judged by Eerie. He's getting a Fire Prism now. Brought to Waffle down to three squads, but they are Operatives, Purifiers, and Grey Knight Terminators. Falcon is still around, doing a massive amount of work for Red Team, allowing them to reinforce it. A well-used support vehicle in Tier 2 is a massive help in team games. Catechins all reliable and now going for the decap on the west side. Here comes the Warps of Rexup who still doesn't have any war gear. Might see the Shimmer Orb later maybe to try and cap mid. Shimmer Orb was nerfed. It no longer grants you a knockback immunity. That was the satchel charge from the operatives. But I think they went down trying to throw it. Yes, they did. Noxious Cloud doing nothing much. Steal those heals from the Nurgle Shrine. And they can still reinforce off it. That's an Eldritch. Gonna take out the Shrine and blow up a bunch of heretics. But they will survive, I think, because of the Aspiring Champion. Yes, they do. They is just about getting out of there with 120 hit points. Now the Chaos Terminators can't reinforce. I think he's just surely gonna replace the Shrine at some point. But he is pretty low on resources and needs to reinforce a bunch of stuff. GG says Anelmat, but Corrupted Waffle is getting some Paladins out. It's going to take a while. They're three quarters of the way done. 
Single cap for red. They do have superior armies at the moment. Nod is down to just three squads. But he does have Vanguard veterans and double level three tactical marines. Oh, Cropted Waffle has lost his interceptors. Didn't even see them go down. Didn't last very long. Sure, he would have loved to keep them to get on the rear armor of this these Eldar vehicles. Going to be tough. It's going to be tough to cap mid now. With multiple D cannons and a fire prism to disrupt to. Not to mention the fire seer can run in and use levitation to throw you aside. She's gone for Armory Assyrian in tier 3. And there's that gravity blade doing work again. Purifier's forced to retreat. Can they get a model off these terminators? Do they have enough firepower here? Maybe turn those D cannons around. There's the time field. Look at the damage from those fire dragons. Still level 1 these guys. Putting out some really nasty metal damage. There's the holocaust on those dire avengers. But terminators are going to need to get out of there. They've already dropped a model. Are they going to drop another on retreat? Elf is flying down but they do have a lot of it. Looks like they might be lucky and get away with the retreat. I think they do. 49-151. Paladins now hitting the field. Taking a lot of damage really quickly here. These guys can also withdraw. And they did also get a health reduction. But they have the awesome shockwave ability. Which we might see. That is set to be fixed at the moment. It does a huge amount of damage because... The units are hit multiple times by the spikes, so they take 30 pissing damage loads of times. Avatar for Eerie now pushing the west side. 35 143. Lanical Terminators moving in to get this Farseer off the cap. They might in fact take her down. Very nearly did. So mid is uncapped as a double for blue team. How did they get the double? They pushed the flank. That's how. Thank God veterans now on capping duty. All the way over here is Nod. Very easy to support both sides on this map. Because it's not big. It's not that big east to west. 35-116. A single for blue. Valiant effort contesting that VP right there. With the amount of stuff Red Team have to stop those decaps. I suppose Terminators can't be knocked back by the Fire Prisoners, but they can still be thrown aside by Singularities. Down goes the Avatar. I think a Plague Marine missile finished it off. Catagers with the old reliable Vanguard Veterans Idol. Here we go. Now moving up with all those power weapons they have a Thunder Hammer, a Lightning Core, and two Power Swords. They do around about 120 DPS power melee all four of them together and a jump squad that's pretty damn good especially with 1800 hit points 1980 of course at level two fast hit a country cap 15 115 that's the singularity and that's gonna actually throw the fast here off yeah i'm not sure why they put it there catachin's just about getting away six hit points another shrine is up they have paladins they have chaos terminators they have soon to be double granite terminators and purifies a massive melee army from corrupted waffle there's a rocket run actually hitting some allied paladins there but they just get back up again and wrist mounted side cannons are in play and you can't underestimate the damage of that thing 18 dps explosive with a little splash as you can see if you get it on rear armor it can really do some work for you but it took tons of damage there and they're forced off immediately 15 115 Another avatar on the way for Eerie. Blue team are not going to want to see that guy because he was a massive pain in the ass. And here Eerie has double fire prisms. Maybe the Chaos Terminators can get this cap here. It's actually the Plague Marines who are not getting disrupted by the fire prisms for some reason. There we go. The shot came a little bit too late. There is quite a long delay between shots for fire prisms. So, wow, they got the 2 to 1. They did not think they'd get that VP back. Autark dropped by Leston, contesting this natural VP for blue team. She doesn't want to fight Purifies, but does have help from a Force Commander with Thunderhammer. He has the Teleporter and Artificer. She's going for the decap, leaving him to fight, and he is going to be forced off here. Purifies are no joke. Once the Battle Cry wears off, he's going to get chopped down. 1588. Is he actually going to go down here, or is he going to get away? Oh, he's got the teleporter, but does go down. They swung before the teleport went off. 
15, 79, double cap for blue team. What's going on here? They've actually got red team's natural. Well played, critical slayer. Got his eye on the ball. There's a Nurgle nuke from Anelmat, and just to be clear, the different nukes for the Chaos Commanders are purely visual differences. They all do the same damage and act in exactly the same way. Just a very nice visual touch. Shrine doing work. Paladins to contest the middle VP. Going to get that pesky Farsi off there. Maybe she should have dropped the time field first. Oh, she doesn't have the energy to do so. There's that levitation field yet again coming into play. It's been really good for them. Lehman Rusk getting way too close to the double missile tactical marines. I suppose you couldn't see them there. Or well, trying to chase down the uh, fire prism. Oh, look at that double cap for red team. They are going to take this game. They have both the naturals. Blue team just running out of steam, eating some nukes. Corrupted Waffle lost a hell of a lot of stuff. Lost strike squad, double operatives, double stormtroopers, interceptors. Surprised he had so much at the end. Not enough, not a lot of power harass on the flanks here. Didn't even finish his generator off. Look at this. And yeah, really disappointed in the plague champion. He was down for ages, but never went over to this power with his bile spear. Not once did I see him even go close to it. I'm not sure why he got the thing. But there you have it. Let's look at the heroes. End of the game. Lord Commissar, level 7 with the power sword. Actually switched to flat jacket. And he has the stubbornness. Got the captain, level 6 with just the teleporter pack. Really surprised he didn't go for that Nemesis Force Sword. It's so cheap at 120 and would have buffed so much stuff. Played champion as we saw with Black Grenades and Bile Spirit is down. Was down for a long time. Walks to Rexite level 4 with absolutely nothing. Less than Sfarsi level 7 and down. We saw her using Rune Armor, Armory Assyrian, Gravity Blade and Spirit Stones and Force Commander level 6 with Thund Hammer, Artificer and the teleporter pack. There you have it guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. I'll see you next time.